Hello and how's it going everyone? It is Skullzy here with the latest Bethesda news, rumors, and speculation and I have some very interesting stuff to talk about in today's video. I'm going to start today's video with two kind of small stories but still very interesting and large in their stature but small in terms of there's not too much to talk about them yet and I don't feel like making a 20 minute video out of like what could be covered in, t in two minutes. But after that I want to transition into something very interesting because I don't think a lot of people may realize that we're like knee deep into when we we should expect to hear any day now something new about Starfield, so I'm going to break all that down as well. And in case you're wondering where I've been for the last couple of days, don't worry, I'm fine, I just died. I was attacked and then set on fire while celebrating my birthday. But let's not waste any more time and get to today's information. And then set on fire while celebrating his birthday. First off, here we go with everyone trying to figure out what Phil Spencer has in his house and on his shelf for some reason, because anytime Phil Spencer is part of any kind of podcast, or just any type of anything at all where he's sitting with a desk near him, people try to, like, break into his office metaphorically and figure out what the heck is going on in there because they believe, like, if you zoom in on, a, on some kind of notebook piece of paper and you you, you figure out what, what the codex is and all the secret messages and what all the symbols mean, you'll figure out what Phil Spencer is hinting at in terms of what we should expect to be announced soon. But all jokes aside, Phil Spencer actually said he does leave clues when he live streams or is part of podcasts on his desk and stuff behind him in terms of what you should expect for future content, future announcements, and just other things related to Xbox and people believe they may have seen a Mandalorian figure. They're not sure if it's a Mandalorian figure or like a, a Halo figure or something, but apparently there is a lot of talk going on now regarding a potential Mandalorian game, and an Xbox Insider actually did say that, or at least they were able to confirm quotes, quote-unquote, because this is insider stuff here. They were able to more or less say they've heard that there is a Mandalorian game being developed that will be an Xbox exclusive game right now, and if you remember, back when uh, that Bethesda Indiana Jones game was announced. It was also announced that LucasArts is also making some sort of game with Xbox as well, and potentially Bethesda might be involved in this also, depending on what insider you ask. I feel like we're in some kind of strange medieval domain now in terms of gaming news and just information because all these different insiders are like all these different dukes and duchies that claim to have information that's a little bit different than other people's information, and someone claims they have more information, and then they fight, and then it's just very confusing. But either way, there might be an Xbox Mandalorian game in development right now that Phil Spencer's Elf on the Shelf hinted at or something, and Bethesda might be involved in this as well. But like I said, this is one of the two quick things I wanted to cover at the beginning of today's video. The other thing I want to talk about is in a recent Microsoft financial thing, financial report, financial meeting, financial Illuminati rit ritual, whatever it is, the gaming portion of Microsoft had one of their best earning financial quarters ever. And it's mostly thanks to Bethesda and not only that, it's thanks to like Skyrim and basically Bethesda's older games that just continue to sell well because that's one of the best things about Bethesda and all their various studios. They make really great games that just have an audience and just keep selling and they make content for later down the line. Basically Bethesda is a great boost to Microsoft and I'm not saying Microsoft doesn't make a ton of money here. I mean they're one of the biggest of uh, giant corporations that control the moon and all the other stuff that happens to you. No, I don't really mean that, but basically Microsoft is a billion dollar corporation. So they would have been fine without Bethesda's help, but Bethesda is already making them have some of their most profitable financial quarters ever, just in their gaming ecosystem. And with that in mind, it makes me wonder how much more assets and attention and love and huggies Microsoft will give Bethesda because, I mean, if they're already making them this much more money, Microsoft is going to probably give them more funding, more assets, more, more, more robots from their AI technology wing basically help them have a lot more assets and stuff at their disposal for their game development and that's super hype because for a long time now I've been saying we are entering the golden age or one of the biggest golden ages of Bethesda as a whole and that was before this Microsoft deal was announced so with that added to this mix we're going to have a huge amazing future for Bethesda, Xbox and because of that also gaming as a whole but now with the first two things out of the way I do want to end today's video with a very quick but still interesting discussion because some some of you may not notice oh it's still not March of 2020 even though it feels like it it's actually May of 2021 and here we are talking about those Bethesda Game Studios patterns again. This should still be low-key considered speculation, but in my opinion, I would consider what I'm about to be talking about here as actual confirmed stuff based on 
speculation or confirmed statements, I guess. Because, like every single insider right now has been saying that Bethesda will be showcasing Starfield in a major way this E3 this summer. And E3's next month. We're actually, like, just about a month away from potentially seeing what Starfield is. We're less than a month away from potentially seeing a 20, up to a 20 minute gameplay sequence of freaking Starfield telling us about the lore, seeing Todd Howard and maybe even friend Elon driving in a Tesla talking to us about Starfield and everything thing about this game, finally getting all these questions answered. Are there aliens in this game? Is there magic in this game? Does this game have Maik the Liar? We're about a month away from finally having all these questions answered, and even though all this is based on inside information, if we don't see Starfield at E3 this year, that would mean like almost every insider in the gaming industry is wrong, and that's kind of crazy, right? Well, if it was just a handful of insiders saying we're going to see Starfield this year, I would be like, okay, if we don't see it, maybe, they're, maybe they all had similar sources and that source is wrong, but there's so many people saying we should hear about Starfield this year. So many people with confirmed track records of basically saying we should see something, and then we see it! Hype is definitely assuming direct control. I know that's something I like to drop a lot. That's a phrase I overuse, but now is the best time to use it, and that Bethesda Game Studios pattern, anytime they have a very major announcement at E3, they usually drop a teaser related to that announcement within a month before it. Sometimes it's at the beginning of June, sometimes it's at the beginning of May, and like I said, we're it, it, it's May now. It's supposed Supposedly the month before one of the biggest gameplay showcases from Bethesda Game Studios ever, because this is their, their like first new IP, one of their first new IPs in over 25 years, so that means the showcase should be huge. If the showcase is going to be huge, you would expect us to get some kind of teaser, maybe beforehand, and like I said, we're knee deep right in that teaser zone. We're in the teaser zone, everyone, so get ready, it's teaser zone time. I don't know where I was going with that, but my point is that any day now, any minute now, literally, Bethesda could drop a Starfield teaser on us, and even though this teaser would be small, it would give us a lot more stuff to talk about, and would definitely be like a match on that gasoline pile of the hype for this game, because somehow people have a lot of hype for a game that we basically don't know anything about, and that Bethesda hasn't really said anything about, I believe Todd Howard himself has even said what I'm saying here before, so imagine when they drop a teaser, things are gonna get lit, Starfield is gonna blow up all over the charts, it's gonna, it's gonna like activate all the chips that Todd Howard planned planted in us from buying Skyrim all over again, and we're just gonna be, become his cyborg warriors that, that conquer the planet and usher in a new era of Starfield, or, or no, maybe Starfield's just a game. Either way, it's been a couple days since I've done anything, leave me alone if my humor is stupid. Basically my point is, if you ever were hyped for this game, now's the time, because unless every insider in gaming is wrong, unless all the Bethesda Game Studios patterns are wrong, unless all these other, like, investigations by myself and other members of the community just we're all coincidental, we are going to see Starfield at E3 this year, and we're knee-deep in that season. Because of that, we should expect a Starfield teaser any day now. But that's going to finish up everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. I've been going through some stuff behind the scenes lately that I don't want to talk about, so I would appreciate all the thumbs and all the huggies and stuff. And as always, speaking of appreciation, huge appreciation to these amazing people and also big huggies to them too, for going above and beyond to support the channel and bring you content like this. If you want to get a permanent feature video shout out to every single one of my videos from this point forward, you can support the channel over on Coffee, Patreon, or here on YouTube as an exclusive channel member. Links for all this and more are down in the description below, and as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next time when Crusader Kings 3 is a good game. I don't know what else you were expecting me to say. I just wanted to say I like that game. It's a good game. Yay, good game. Uh